All right, so uh, now that we have the access token, we can actually make requests to the API. So we jumped through a bunch of hoops to get to this point, but now we can make requests. So making requests. To make requests to the Fitbit API, simply add an authorization header to the HTTP request with the user's access token. So that's just what we got. We just got the access token. So that's this is the request. So this is going to just get our profile. Um, so if we go back to Postman, make a new request here, paste that in, and then we just have to add a header here with authorization. Uh, all right, and then bearer. And this is an example token, so we need to add an hour token. So space right there, and then go back to here. Get the access token. All right, so it should be as simple as that. Uh, with a little luck, this will work. All right, so this is just our profile info. So we have age. Uh, birthday, all of this information. So this is it. From here you can um, play with the API. So let's just see what other kind of requests there are. Fitbit API. Uh, let's see the API Explorer. Um, activities. So let's try this. Get activities. So you see from here it's just as simple as what we just did, but but uh, just changing the requests a little bit. So, um, slash user, slash activities.json. Could not be found. Did I spell that wrong? Probably. There we go. Um, so these, I guess, are the activities that I've done. I'm not sure. Uh, why are they all from 2018? Oh, this is my Fitbit. No, I was thinking of Strava. I was like, I've definitely done some things before, since 2018. But let's see if we can find, like, heart rate. Uh, devices, that'd be cool. Let's see devices. So I, I have a charge, too. So I guess, I guess that would return charge, too, right? Oh, cool. So battery high, it's at 80. Charge 2. Nice. That's the MAC address, I guess. Nice. Um, the only other thing I'm really interested in is heart rate. So, heart rate time series. Yeah, it looks like they want us to put in a, like a start and end date. Is there not one a way just to get it today? Uh... Anyway, I'll let you guys play with this, um, but if there's any problems with a specific request, just comment and I can take a look at it. Um, so, so now that we have the access token, that access token actually expires, I think, um, I think like eight, after eight hours or something. Um, yeah, an access token is a short-lived the access tokens have an eight hour lifetime. So what's gonna happen is this token will, after eight hours of playing with this and making requests like this, it's gonna expire. So what we need to do is basically, if we go back to this um, request we made to get the access token, it also came with this refresh token. So basically to, to get a new access token, we use this refresh token um, and it basically gives us the same thing again. It gives us a new access token and a new refresh token. So let's uh, 
let's work on building this. So that's our request. Um, add this here. Post. Um, a lot of copy and pasting back and forth. So authorization header must be set to basic followed by space. So this sounds familiar. This is exactly what we did before. So if we go back to this, jeez, uh, that's the wrong. If we go back to here and here. We have authorization. And then we have this, which if you remember, this was the result of encoding our, uh, our ID colon secret. So that's the same same process there, um, and then we just have to add these these two things. So basically, this request we're, we're saying, hey, this is a grant type, um, or we're saying grant type, and then we're saying, okay, what what kind of grant type is it? It's a refresh token. So oh, actually, these need to be in here. Now back to the parameters. This is where we need the grant type. I wonder if it would just be <laughs> faster to type these out. All right, refresh token. Okay, so this is where we need to supply it with our refresh token code, which we got here. So all of this can be done programmatically. So that's what I'm going to do in, in a, a later video is I'll show you how to do it in Python and probably JavaScript. Um, so you don't have to do this every day. Uh, grant type, refresh token. Uh, I wish they put this piece of information up here, but because before when I was doing this, I forgot to add this. So we need to add this as well to the header. All right. All right, um, with any luck, this will work. Refresh token and refresh token. Now let's just try it. No, something went wrong here. Um, Yeah, it didn't like that. Let me take a closer look. Hmm. So I'm just going to look at this in Notepad. token token <laughs> I don't know for some reason I don't I must have copied it wrong but I didn't have token there so uh, just make sure it looks like this and you'll see that basically this is what we did here when we got the code initially from the browser but now now we can always make these refresh token requests so if we had this running in a website we always have an access token and we always have a refresh token so we can always get a new access token so that's good news um, I hope this video was helpful um, 
let me know if there's anything, any, any other special requests or information. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm going to show you how to do this in Python and JavaScript, hopefully. Um, so look out for those videos. All right, see ya.